Hello, everybody. I hope this finds you well. Today we're talking about efficiency, efficiency in government or public services, and why government is often less efficient than the public sector. Of course, there's a host of reasons why, from different mandates to different customers to different objectives, different missions and visions. The list is quite extensive, but in this discussion, I wanted to focus on two reasons, two reasons why government or the public service is less efficient, less effective as a means of delivering products and services than the private sector. First, we should know the differences between public and private sector. Public sectors, any organization or entity that's supported by a tax, a tax is a mandate, a tax is a requirement that a person pay. They pay the fee. Whether they like the service or not, whether they want the service or not, they must pay that fee. Taxes are typically seen as anything from a property tax to, of course, the income tax. There's also a sales tax. Those tend to be the big three. But there's also other types of taxes that are required if you want to do something um, in your municipality, the city, or even your state. We call those fees, but they're really just a tax. In previous decades, you never had to pay that fee or tax. It was part of the property taxes that you paid, or the income taxes. But now, in addition to the property tax and income tax that you pay, there's these other fees to use specific services. For instance, in the police departments, they charge you for to get a copy of a police report or for an alarm permit. Those used to be part of what you paid your property taxes for, but since property taxes are not sufficient, certainly in California, to pay for those services, they now charge you if you want to use specific services. So it's an additional, in essence, tax. The private sector, by contrast, is one that is supported by those who pay for their services or their products. If you don't buy the service or product, you don't have to pay for it. And so it's one of those true aspects where if you want something, you pay for it. If you don't want something, you don't have to pay for it. There's no control requirement or mandate that you purchase their service or product, and therefore you don't have to pay for what they're offering. That's the difference between the public and private sector. Both provide some service or product, no doubt about that. But there's two distinct differences between the public sector and the private sector. This goes for whether it's education or construction. From military, whether that's private or public, usually when we talk about military, um, it's a form of police services, and the private sector has a host of police services. But in general, the private sector is more efficient, is more effective than the public sector. And I'll highlight, highlight two specific reasons why. First is, in the private sector, they serve the public. The public sector serves their constituency. You may think that the public sector serves the public as well. But in reality, they serve narrow, specific areas of the public. They have certain constituencies that they have to serve. Those constituencies vote, and those who get the most votes get office, get elected to the office. And so if you are running for office, you certainly want to appeal to as broad of a constituency as possible. You want to have as many people like the services, the products that you deliver, and the promises that you give, that you'll continue to have those products and those services given to that constituency. The more constituency, the wider the constituency, the broader the constituency, the better chance you have get, to get elected. To use one example, post offices. There's about 35,000 post offices, far too many. They serve less people than your average Walgreens on a weekly basis, yet they still can continue to be open because they're popular in those small towns that they operate in. And often when they're in larger towns, you have many more post offices than are needed. Volume of mail continues to diminish, but the post office buildings still remain because they're politically popular. They serve a constituency. And the person who says that their continue 
with those buildings is going to continue to represent that constituency. Certainly not efficient to have that many, but they remain. Education is another example. There's, in some areas, more schools than we need. Yet those schools serve as anchors in certain communities. And to close those schools, to consolidate those schools, to make them more efficient and effective, certainly in the delivery of their product, which is education, but also in the use of their resources, which is our tax dollars. But those schools often remain very difficult to close. It's because they serve a constituency. A constituency can be in that town or that county or that state. And if you are a large enough constituency, you have power in the amount of votes that you can deliver, and therefore people who are running to represent those areas are going to vote to keep those schools, in this case, but other kinds of services open. Whether it's economically beneficial or not, they remain. So, the first difference between the public and the private sector in terms of delivering services and why the public sector is not as efficient or effective in delivering services is because they serve constituencies and not the general public. The second reason is this aspect of certain versus uncertain future. The public sector has a quite certain future. The public sector doesn't. Actually, the private sector doesn't. The private sector is not guaranteed that their products or services are going to be bought, as I mentioned earlier. Therefore, they have to be innovative. They have to focus on change. They have to focus on meeting the needs of the customer, the public, because if they don't, then the public isn't going to support their product or service. They'll go out of business eventually. The public sector, the government, really has very few worries about that. They can always raise taxes or raise fees. And given that you're mandated to pay for them, there's little need and there's little requirement or demand that the public sector be more efficient in the way that they deliver services. If they're inefficient, all they have to do is raise the prices, raise what they charge others that are required to pay it. Conversely, in the private sector, if they were to raise prices for a product that the public doesn't want, the public would just simply refuse to buy it. Therefore, that public sector business would go out of business. It would no longer cease to exist. If you're in the private sector and somebody else comes up with a better, cheaper product, unless you do the same again, you'll go out of business. You can innovate yourself as a private sector out of business. Kodak is a great example. We no longer print out the volume of pictures that we did. In fact, we even got rid of most of our phones. Many people just own their cell phone. Notice how we use the word cell phone um, as a combination of not just we have a phone, but there's other aspects of that phone that we use. That cell phone is eliminated Anything from alarm clock to mirrors, from GPS to, yes, your cameras nowadays. And so those are the two biggest differences that we see in, the, in between the public sector and the private sector and why one is more efficient than the other. Really no fault of one or the other, but the public sector isn't built on innovation. It's not built on change. It's not built on making something better, cheaper, or faster built on delivering a good or service to a constituent that then is going to support the person that's delivering that good or service. There's an inherent relationship between the person providing that good or service and the person receiving it. As long as those two aspects continue, product or service being delivered, person receiving it, voting for the person who's delivering it, that will continue until, in fact, if and until, the public rises and says, we will not pay that amount of money. And anybody who supports, meaning the person elected to represent that constituency, and until that person requires that service to be more efficient and more effective, it will continue to be less efficient and less effective. The public really is the determining factor on how goods and services are delivered, both the cost and the way and manner in which they are. So there are true differences between the public and private sector, and education is wrestling, as with other aspects of the public sector, they're wrestling with how best to deliver that service and remain in business. Education, in particular, is going to have 
a fraught 10 years, one that's going to be challenging. The goods that they're offering certainly don't stack up amongst the world. As we've mentioned, what can be seen, we are about the fifth highest in spending, but the quality of our service is anywhere from 20 to 21 when you look at K through 8, math, science, and English. Studies vary, but that's a generalization that appears to be true. We spend more and get less. That's why more are moving towards the private sector. Those that have the means are going to educate their kids in the private sector. It's true sad, in a way, because we should have a universal system that's effective for all, not just for some. It can be done, though. We can reorganize, re-engineer, and restructure our educational system to be more efficient, be more effective. The issue is, will the public demand it, and will the constituency, those representing the constituency, act upon it? Enjoy the week, everybody. Hope you're doing well.